For the next 100 days, I'm gonna be stranded on a deserted island, only able to use what the vast ocean provides. I end up transforming this place into a paradise, creating one of my favorite builds to date. So strap in as I set off on this amazing adventure. Spawning on the island, we really don't have a lot to work with. The trees we have access to are birch and oak. At least we have some sort of variation. The first thing we did was cut down all the trees and collect saplings. I don't want to be stranded here not having the most valuable resource. Then I went and grabbed tools for the both of us. I contemplating only making them for myself, but remembered my manners. I then gathered a bit of seeds, and with my luck, I was only left with two. That's not a lot to plant down, and it won't even make one piece of bread when it grows. We're most likely gonna starve out here. Most people when stranded think to wait for rescue, maybe even make an SOS out of sticks. Us? Uh, no, 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 no. We want to thrive here, make an amazing island that will support us through time. The only way to survive that way and not end up as a real castaways was to jump into the unknown water below and gather food. We grabbed an assortment of fish and seaweed to hopefully make sushi, although I don't think sand and rice taste the same so we might just have to scarf that down. Back in our makeshift camp, we smelted our earnings to tidy us over, as well as got some logs cooking. If you don't somehow know by now, logs can be turned into charcoal, allowing us to cook more food. Once our food game was strong, we dug down a bit more and grabbed coal. I used that to light up the island so no creepy crawlies or exploding green beans showed up. The only other impactful thing that happened was mining down far enough to explore some caves. Once safely down the cavern, we split up to get full iron. And plenty there was. Mined probably more than needed, but extra is good. At one point, I headed for coal and ended up finding a diamond. Now, I'm sure you dummies would have mined it, but hold the phone, let me get out my iron pickaxe first. I continued exploring the mines in hopes to find more diamonds, but with my food source depleting and an extreme lack of armor, we might just need to get armor and dip. When I was finally able to find Chloe again, we perfectly stumbled upon a diamond. Which is cool, technically, if they weren't all one veins. Why did Minecraft have to nerf caving into the ground? It just makes me so upset. Once our stuff was smelted up, we headed back into the mines, if only to even find more caves with one veins of diamonds. I also may have run out of food at one point and was using rotten flesh until I found the holy cave. The lush cave, one that has a food source hanging from the ceiling. I used all the blocks I had gotten so far just to get up to this food. But since the cave kinda ended here, it ruined my fun and I just figured I would build up. Into the middle of the ocean, that is. Now I'm kinda just stranded out here swimming till I find my home. Oh, it, it's right there, never mind, my bad. Somehow the island had spawned sheep for us, a very rare thing to happen on such a small plot of land. However, I quickly boarded them up in a new forever home so they didn't swim away. Did they even do that? I was also able to take away the one thing they had going for them, wool, and make beds to sleep away the darkness. Then I realized that the sheep are in an area where they can't regrow wool. So I quickly moved them to a new spot and karate chopped one of them into his pen. After that, we worked on flattening the island. The real reason we did this is so that we can make our own home. I don't want to have to deal with this terrain and later in the video, we make this place look amazing. So you won't want to miss that. Once the island was semi cleared off, I used a circle generator since I cannot geometry anymore and made the outline for our main island. We then filled it with sand and created a small design on it so it did indeed look like an island instead of a man-made flat surface. I never want my builds to be man-made, well, the environment ones at least. With the island done, we can follow it up with a house tomorrow. Hopefully. I don't think we have enough wood for that yet, actually. I was right, look at that. So instead of just building with what I had, I grew more trees. And while I cut these bad boys down, I'm gonna ask that you subscribe. I also really want to hit 400,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Going from literally nothing to where we are now has already been amazing, so thank you all for that. And as always, if you want to like the video and help me beat the robot we call YouTube, that would be great as well. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. With some wood gathered while I self promote I started work on the base of our home. I want it to be a beach style house, so it will need to have a sturdy foundation, especially since it's built on sand. And with two areas of the house planned out, we're probably about one fourth of the way done with this thing. It does look like it's got great potential going for it though. I started work on the first section of the base. I wanted to use birch in this as best as possible since first off I never use this wood and secondly because it's the only other wood we have for variation. And now that the first story is done we can at least use this for something and then I'll start working on the log slanted roof. The reason I love this roof so much is because of the contrast of wood from just the slab to the real log. Unfortunately I wasn't fully able to finish it with our lack of materials so instead of waiting for the trees to grow we dive back down into the caves. We were down here for a long time, but since we had already explored a bit of this place near the beginning, we figured it best to just strip mine. Within 30 blocks of going in one direction, <laughs> that's a band, or it used to be, I don't know. The point is, I mined into my first diamonds, and I want you to count how many I am mining right now, because if my math is correct, I just mined a total of 16 diamonds in a single vein. 
Now, in previous videos, I've mentioned that I mined a 15 vein of diamonds before, but a lot of you didn't believe me, and well, here you go. I broke my own personal record just now. With that luck looming over us, I don't see how we can ever top that. Although, I did find more diamond veins at one point, just never near 16, since they nerfed caving into the ground. But eventually, after meeting up and mining our last diamond of this trip, we ended with around 38 diamonds in total from all of our trips combined. Not enough to make us both armor, but it's still a good amount to have on deck in case we need them for anything like tools or... At well, I guess armor, but we're not going to do that until we both have our... It's a whole thing. So while Chloe stayed down below doing her thing mining, I did the chores on the surface world. Since we are gone, our trees and plants grew up enough for me to have to harvest some of them. Then with the logs I had taken from the freshly grown giant broccolis, I was able to finish off the roof of our first beach home. I think once it was done, it looked really good and fit the theme of the video well. The main use for this home is going to be crafting, smelting, and sleeping, as I added a small room at the top for us to just get rid of the nighttime. Speaking of that, once it was dark, Chloe emerged from the caves in the middle of the ocean, so as a great survival partner I am, I grabbed a boat and headed out to find her. Eventually I did, and returned her back to the only place of land this world has to offer. Day 13 through 14 were some great days. We noticed the food supply to be more lacking on the island, and to fix that, we made fishing rods to try and use the resource we have plenty of, water. Yes, we just went fishing for food, and as you know, I've attempted this in the past and literally hated it. I have never liked fishing in any scenario because it literally feels like a waste of time. But when you're on an island stranded with one another, things just seem more calm. Having the ability to fish was just great. We chilled out by the shore and caught some fresh food. We were also able to catch up some really nice books from the sea, and hopefully we can use those for later enchants, since we won't be able to make a level 30 enchant table with our extreme lack of sugarcane. Then around our second day on the water, a man came around offering some really bad stuff. Of course, we figured it best to steal his llamas for payment and make him disappear. Forever. Although I have this weird feeling the llamas didn't like me that much, I don't know what that's all about. I feel like I've been plenty nice to them. Kind of. The next day I went back to do some chores. Can someone tell me why they've added these stupid big trees in Minecraft? Cutting these mother yuckers down is harder than winning the freaking Super Bowl. I also noticed I had just enough wood to start the building for our part two home. Much like the first one, I really wanted to be able to use birch in it since it's such a leftover wood. Understandably so, but I wanted to give it a purpose. I did this one a bit lamer, since it was just going to be the chest room. However, the design of it still makes it feel like a home. The roof is a bit more standard, but who can complain about this build? Then I did the lovely process of moving all of our possessions to the new place with zero organization. Yes, that is important for later. By the morning of day 16, we had officially vacated the beach property front in favor of our new home. Then for the rest of the day, I ventured down to get obsidian for an enchant table. Once I returned to the surface, I remade some iron armor and diamond tools, enchanting them all and looking fire. At least I feel a bit more prepared for what this ocean has to offer. Now the next few days were spent back in the caves. With the making of enchanted gear, I really wanted to look snazzy and upgrade it to diamond armor. So we went back down into the caverns to begin the strip mining journey. Although that didn't last at the start as we found a new enough cave to explore. The one thing about this adventure though is that Minecraft really wanted me to not get footage. And by that, I mean I basically got 5% of the diamonds on this trip. Apparently while walking through caves, my vision was just shot and I would walk past diamonds that I literally never saw to this day and she would steal them from me. I get that we're sharing gear and stuff, but being so blind that I couldn't see diamonds in an open cave just sucked. It was just like someone was placing diamonds behind me so she would find them and I wouldn't. I ended up mostly just staying in the strip mine going in a straight line in hopes of somehow getting better at spawning diamonds. The only time I was rewarded with more than a one vein was after two days of being down here. The thing was, she still had more than triple my diamond finds. However, around day 19, I think, she found a guardian temple and all I heard for more than 15 minutes straight was, I'm stuck because of mining fatigue. So she had mined to a temple and somehow trapped herself underground with mining fatigue. I then spent the next 40 minutes of my life mining to her, not finding a single diamond, I might add. Once I did find her, I took her down to my Y level and took her all the way from the temple and walked her back home. I swear I'm taking care of a dog at this point. But we did make it home safe and sound with around a stack and 25 of diamonds in total. After such a long mining trip, Chloe got fed up with our lack of organization and wanted to fix it. Now this is the start of what I'd like to refer to as the Great Controlling War. What I mean by this is for the rest of the video, anytime I want to put stuff away, she's going to have to fix it because I don't care about organization and she does. However, the trip we did just take allowed me to make myself and her fully enchanted diamond armor. Now I think we do really look good. Which now that I think of it, the only reason I made us look so good is that during this time lapse of us fishing for another few days, we look amazing. 
Yes, after a long mining trip like that, we did have to replenish food and hope for more books that will help in our enchanting journey. But since I'm assuming fishing to you guys is super boring, let's just move on. So one of the goals for this video is make the most practical and beautiful island possible. Well, to do that, we need to clean this place up a bit and add some more land for real things. I started to plan out a new island base specifically for trees, so I pulled out the old circle generator once more and got to work. Overall, it does end up looking like a circle to me. But to get to the island, I needed to make a bridge. I wanted something simple but very useful in nature. Just a wide three path that won't be making us go overboard anytime soon. Then I had to start filling it in with dirt, as that's what trees grow on, but soon realized we didn't have that much. So we cleared out the under layers of the dirt on our island, and it basically just left us guessing where the ocean was and doing our best to mine around it to collect all of the dirt. With that, I was able to finish off the island and have something to work with later when beautifying it up a notch. However, I'm not quite done yet. I still need to make a place for the sheep to stay, so I went back to the circle generator and remade the exact same island. This one we did have enough dirt for since we had just gotten some and were able to move the sheep here over safely. No one died. At all. I promise. But now we have three islands for practical use only. Not bad. Although the island we have does look bad with this random chunk, so I kind of wanted to get rid of it. Meaning, we went to work removing the entire beach and smoothing it into our already made island. This was a much longer process than I thought since the dirt was removed earlier making the ocean not fill itself back in so the attention to detail we had to have on this entire project was so heightened. I will tell you this, I won't be dealing with oceans for a long time after this video, strictly land only from now on, I'm not kidding, land is better than water. But eventually we had it sorted out to a point where the only land pieces we could see are the ones that we've built. And since building's kind of taken a toll on me, let's get the adventure started. We really wanted to go to the nether because, well, that's a huge spot for things we can do. First, we needed the obsidian. We went back into the cave. oh right, we just removed the entrance. Anyway, we made it to the obsidian and gathered all that we needed, slowly, I might add. Then we made our portal in the lovely location, totally even with the land and everything. It's, it's perfectly centered, I swear. Upon landing in the nether, we were stuck in a wall. Not the coolest thing to happen, but we do need blocks while being here, so I guess it works out. Once finally opening ourselves to the world, we just got stuck in small cracks in the nether. Traveling in this dimension is the worst thing ever. But eventually, I found real air, open space, it was beautiful. However, Chloe may have been stuck, so I was on my own for now. I headed out into the world and found a fortress, perfect. I went over and started grinding blazes. Not really sure why I need to right now, but I may as well, I'm here. Eventually, my plan was to make strength potions so we could go bastion hunting and take on brutes. But before we could do that, I left the nether without wart. One of the main things I would need to make strength potions. So, guess who was going back looking for wart in the nether fortress? But with my luck, the fortress that I did find didn't have any nether wart. So we had to risk our lives bridging over a gigantic lava lake to get to a new fortress. Thankfully, this one had the nether wart and we could get out of this place. So much work just for a simple drink. Is this what it's like being an adult? But with everything I need, I was able to make myself and Chloe three strength potions. Then I felt a little bit more brewy in me and decided to make us fire res potions. Two for her, cause well, I'm better and I only need one. Sorry, Chloe. Okay, so now that we have the gear to take on one of the hardest places in this game, it was just time to find it. And yes, I actually believe taking on a bastion, specifically a treasure one, is harder than actually fighting any of the bosses this game has to offer, as of 1.18. Now the warden, I'm not gonna, no, just, Please no. With our travels, we found nothing for a day, until we got to a bastion. One of the best, worst ones out there. I really wanted a treasure bastion, not this weird one with so many holes in it. However, while there, I was able to get a few things like scraps, or just one, but hey, that works. On to hopefully a better one, cause that thing sucked. Oh hey, that works. This is literally the bastion I wanted. Can it get any better than this? Okay, I guess it can, holy cow. A full netherite ingot is what I'm interested in. Plus, we of course were able to mine all of these gold blocks so we can trade for pearls later. And if you don't think we got down here legit, well, watch me be an idiot for a second and still somehow survive. So no, we didn't just cheat down here. I wanted a dramatic cut for the content, so you know what, I'm not sorry. So with all that gold, we did get a horde of piggies to give us stuff. But over the course of 40 minutes of trading and like 40 blocks, we got 10 pearls. In my 100 days trailer video, I got 12 pearls in four trades, but here it takes 360 trades to get 10. Math. So how do you end your adventures? Maybe some champagne or like building Legos with a friend? I don't know what y'all do, but I know what we do. Go fishing for like four more days. Yes, I said that correctly. We did indeed go fishing for days just to relax. If you don't think this view isn't stunning and relaxing, then you don't know Minecraft. 
It was pure enjoyment these few days, and no matter how much time we lose doing it, it is really fun. So I would give you five seconds of relaxation. Alright, enough of that. Let's go back into the nether for some more bastions. You think I'm kidding? No, that was some fun stuff we did, and it's kind of like a drug, almost dying in a hardcore world. Somehow I find it fun, okay? I'm not AFK, you are. But after that, we did go on a very, 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 very long journey just to find a bastion. It did happen to be a treasure one though, so it was kind of worth it, right? Well, it did give us plenty of gear, like two netherite ingots. That's, that's amazing. I think I can actually make a full set now, and of course we grabbed all the gold we could before dipping out of this place and returning home. Also, I forgot to mention like 10 days ago I made this mailbox. The deal with this thing is I have to put all the stuff I would normally put into chests into here. Reason being is because apparently I'm just wrong and don't do sorting like Chloe wants to, so I'm reduced to using a mailbox for my items. However, since she eventually sorts them for me, it's kind of like having a maid. Heck you, Chloe. The next few days we're clean up on the island. The first thing we need is to make the sheep's home just not dirt. So I went to the caves to find moss. Now a sheep can't actually eat moss, but it makes the island look nicer when the grass spreads at the pace of a lazy snail. I was able to find the old lush cave from before and take its natural resources. Huh, wait, am I officially a human for taking the planet's resources? Back up top, I started work on spreading the moss. I wanted it in a circular fashion since the middle of this island would still have to be grass so we can replenish the sheep's wool. Then I make the island that much better. I planted slash grew the azalea trees to match the island, as well as had been being visited by another llama man. Once more, he was useless and I just somehow ended up with two new free llamas. I, I don't know the backstory to that. After that, I struggled for way too long to make the sheep's pen perfect, but once it was done, they can live in peace and I can get to go back for chores. Actually, the real reason I'm cutting trees right now is so that I can terraform this island as well. I think I'm just in a terraforming mood. Basically, all I did was add a small plot of land for a farm and place it all around, then regrow the trees on the other plot of land so that we have constant wood and food. However, somehow we continue to fish over and over when we have a supply of potatoes that we could have easily just cooked. Day 48, I went around the main island and replaced the cobblestone we had used to make it with quartz. The reason for this is because I want to actually be able to make this area look nice and cobble just doesn't scream amazing to me. Once it was done, the place looked so much better. Real estate price just literally doubled. However, since it looked so good, I went to the farming island to do the exact same thing. Then that island's price also doubled. Maybe I can get Mr. Beast to buy this place for another one of his subscribers. Sure, they'd love it. So I still have a lot of islands to make, and one of those plots of land is right here, where I started work on the good old bridge design once more, and followed it up at night with a new circle I'll have to fill in later. But that is another island outlined for the books. Boats? Would boats be better to say there since the theme of the island? Day 50, I went to work on the diagonal bridge, which was an absolute mess by the way. No one tells you how hard something is until you do it. However, after a long process, we got there and had a really nice looking bridge to a brand new island someday. After that, I dove back into the caves for some coal since food requires that to cook. And let me tell you, there's like no coal at all down here. I was mining for a long time and I swear I would get excited at a one vein of it. Why has it been easier to find diamonds nowadays than coal? They ruined caving. Also, I want to mention, epic clutch. So now that I have an idea for what the diagonal bridge will look like, I need to go back into the nether and gather quartz. So what if I told you that's exactly what I did? Would you be shocked or spooked? What if I put boo on the- oh god. Anyway, quartz. You know the drill. It's so fun. You want to never do it again. It's like Disneyland when you're an adult and you realize that the mass amount of people there are just trying to trample you. With all the materials gathered, I replaced some of the islands with quartz, and thought of a new island I could make. Obviously, we are in an open ocean and can fish from anywhere, but I still want to make an island for it. Yes, indeed, what I want to do is make a fishing hub. So basically like a select pond that we can fish in. I also wanted to use birch since it has been useless its entire life, I may as well let it have something. I then made small docks and lights to decorate the area, as well as added some barrels and leaves, making this place the better of the islands we have. Next, I gathered up some wood from what I will dub as the Chore Island, so that I would be able to make docks to match the diagonal ones I had already made. Once it was time for that, I worked on making the matching three. The first one I tried to do was an upset. I kept pacing back and forth between the builds, not knowing what I was doing, until I realized I had originally placed it all wrong. So once I fixed my mistake, my brain began to work again so I could move on and get all of them done. It kind of just looks like I'm making a bunch of branches from a tree. So one of the islands I want to make to fill out the four useful quadrants is a mining island. We need a new entrance to our cave since excavation ruined our last one. So I went down to gather a ton of stone so I can make this island, and then I grabbed coal to smelt it all down. 
Making the island was a bit of a stretch for me. I first used moss as an indicator of the cave. Then I laid out plenty of cobble to follow as an outline. The idea is to just have a cave come out of the ground with a ladder that's inside leading to our actual caves. Once all the stone was done smelting, I also added it to the layout of the cave, so it's not just all one ugly cobblestone. Lastly, I finished up the inside of the cave by adding an entrance and a little bit of support on the inside so it beautifies it up a bit. To finish out what I've originally set to do with the bridges, I went back into the quartz outlines. I was able to get almost all of them done with the quartz that we had, however, I ran out while replacing the deep slate one from earlier. Ah, uh, back to the nether I go, where I was tasked with getting enough quartz to finish off some of the project. Although, after all that, the island's not looking too bad, and I'm very excited with what I'm going to be able to do for the outside islands, because it's going to look amazing. Now, over the course of the last many, many moons and days, I have worked my butt off making the island livable. But with work comes the spoils, or at least a relaxing vacation to our brand new fishing island. I especially love it due to the replay shots I can get of it. And while we do some fishing, I want to tell you guys about the merch we've made. It directly resembles the 100 days videos I put out for all of you, and personally, I don't wear much else than this stuff, so get yours down below in the description. Next, I wanted to upgrade my gear. I know we can't really grind for an enchant table, although I have a way to do that if we end up doing 200 days, but I have to get netherite first. So I went back into the nether to get to the best item in the game. Now while I'm mining, some of you will say that I have netherite at home. Yes, sure, I have 4 ingots, but I have to think about Chloe as well, and 4 won't do both of us justice. However, over the course of being down here for three days, I got the smallest amount of netherite possible. I really wanted to gather enough for both of us, but the amount of lava I had to avoid to make this possible made it impossible. So I was really only able to get three new ingots for us, meaning we might have to come back here at some point. Before I make myself the netherite, I want to get a little higher gear-wise, meaning I only have about prot 2 right now, and I really want to upgrade that to prot 3 before I even consider making it into netherite. But with the lack of diamonds we possess, I'm gonna go need to get more. In the caves, I find it best to just strip mine and hope for the best. I also forgot to grab torches, so it's kind of really dark down here. I'll just do my best to include only the highlights from here on out. And with almost a brand new stack of these bad boys, we're out of here. So basically what I did to make the armor amazing was craft diamond gear to match my helmet and boots. Then I took the useless books that we had and disenchanted them so that I can make them into protection. Once I had both P3 helmets and boots, I disenchanted my leftover armor and put Prod 3 on both of them. Now I have a full protection 3 diamond set, but I'm not quite done as I turned it all into netherite armor to finish off the look. After that, I wanted to get back to getting some pearls so we can actually face the dragon at some point. And once we do that, I'll have access to all the materials I want for our last build. So I went back into the nether and found those same piggies from earlier and gave them all of my gold. This time, not 360, it was more like 180. Over the course of this time, however, I was given enough pearls to matter. Basically, more than last time. And finally, I'm not AFK, you are. Day 77, Chloe and I were ready to face a dragon, or at least prepare for one. So it took her an entire day to understand me saying the line, You should make your armor prot too, I got extra diamonds for you. To me, that means make a new set, enchant it with Prot 1, and combine it with your almost broken Prot 1 set to make it P2. To her, that means... So yes, it did take me a day to explain this. With gear at the ready, I threw the first eye to go find this dragon, and we set off on our day's long ride. Along the way, we even ended up finding a guardian temple, so if you want to see us fight that in 200 days, I'd suggest liking the video. Once we arrive at the area we thought the stronghold was in, we mined down. Funny enough, I went straight into the portal room. I've had my fair share of luck, but this was just pure skill and you can't argue. And then once Chloe arrived there soon after, we popped in the eyes and started our adventure. On the island, Chloe was rocking a bow and I had a crossbow. We took out all the towers as fast as we could and let me tell you the bow is much different than a crossbow. However, I don't actually hate the crossbow. Once we had all of his healing sticks taken out, the dragon perched and I bed bombed him to half HP. Of course, he got scared and ran away like a coward, but once he was back, I re-drank a strength potion and hammered his face in because my man's health sank faster than the Titanic. Of course, getting the final kill means absolutely nothing to the XP, and it literally all went to Chloe, because in multiplayer, or at least on my server, it all lumps up, and she got the lump sum. I'm only okay with this because we don't have a level 30 enchant table, but let me tell you, I'd probably kill her for those levels. Now it was time to go get ourselves an elytra. As you all know, I have good days and bad days. Today was definitely a bad day. I was running and running and running around the end trying to find a city. All while the whole time, Chloe was already at one, having the time of her life getting an Elytra. And I was just stuck out here in the middle of the nowhere, all until something amazing happened. I struck the mother load. Look at this thing. I've seen my fair share of cities, but this one is big. 
Actually, you know what? Maybe, maybe it's just it's too big. Maybe a smaller size would have been better, like a more a more average city, as they deserve love too. <clears throat> anyway. The important thing is, I was able to loot a ton of chests in this place, getting different ranges of diamond and iron gear. The only reason I'm holding on to the iron, by the way, is because it's enchanted, and we don't actually have access to this level of enchants, so I'm keeping it. We also got valuables like diamonds, gold, and iron, but the most important thing was getting my hands on an elytra, even though we can't enchant it, and we have zero access to fireworks. Okay, maybe I didn't think this one through. Once we left the end, I gave Chloe her sorting task while I went and made the ender dragon lamp. It looks amazing by the bed, and of course, credits to Magi for the design. Alright, with the time left, we still have four islands that we need to build out. The plan is to have two separate nether islands and two separate end islands. So first, I have to go and gather all the materials I'll be needing in the nether. I searched high and low until I found a crimson biome, and started trying to mine the materials I needed, quickly realizing that without Silk Touch, the trip could end up being much shorter. So instead, I redesigned what I already had planned in my head, and got to gathering all the trees I could. Of course, I forgot to hoe, so the mining process took a lot longer than normal, but I did eventually end up with a full shulker box of all the materials I think I'll be needing. Once I got home, I began work on the build. I laid out all the netherrack and worked on putting up some hills in the place, again making the environment not look man-made. Then I built up some custom mushrooms out of the trees I had mined to make the place a bit more like the nether. And then of course, I forgot the key element, the nether fortress, which is why I'm mining it out right now. Once back, I got to work on the build again and laid out a ruined fortress, both ends being collapsed and lava flowing from beneath it. Overall, this might end up being my favorite island, but we're nowhere close to done. To start the next island, I had to go back to the stronghold so I can gather up some endstone and obsidian. For the endstone, I just took a big old chunk out of the end. Not sure how much I'll end up needing, but I gathered like 12 stacks to be safe. And for some reason, I feel absolutely no remorse for the home I've kind of just destroyed. Then I went and gathered two stacks of obsidian, and am I glad that the pickaxe was netherite with efficiency 4? Otherwise, this would have taken forever. Thank god Chloe fished up that book, and y'all say fishing is useless. At home, I began to make the island, laying out all the endstone and creating the exact same terrain as before, small hills to just make sure it's not so flat. Then I went around and added in obsidian spikes. I was going to make the generic portal island, but it felt a little off, so instead I just built an egg monument and by the end it looked super cool. In my mind, it's like the island was completely safe until I put the egg down and then the spikes came out of the ground to protect the egg. Could you imagine if this thing hatched? Oh my word, that'd be so cool to see it flying around in the overworld. Next are the final two islands, and I only have about seven days to make them. Did I mention they're about the biggest ones yet? And since all the previous islands costed a lot more resources than I expected, guess who has to go back into the nether for more stuff? Chloe and I spent our time traveling out in the world to find or refind a bastion that we could take down. I wanted to make an island that had a bastion slash soul valley structure. Once we found one, it happened to of course be a treasure bastion, so we had to loot it. We grabbed all the goodies and then started to actually mine out the bastion. I think if this wasn't a treasure one, it would have had a lot less to mine, but thankfully I was able to be down at the bottom mining out the entire underneath of a lava lake. And once I was ready to leave, we headed home, because we had already gathered the other materials we needed on our way here. The build itself took the longest so far, once again laying down the island structure and decorating it with a bit of soil. Then onto my favorite bastion build to date. I made this structure look a lot more medieval than the current bastion, and it surely made it 10 times better. And then with the addition of the detailing, the bastion looks amazing. Later on, I also added lava to give it a final touch, but it was already the perfect bastion. So this just amped it up to about a 12. And finally, we dove back into the end for the last island as we wanted to create an end city. This time, we had to head back and find a new structure to remove. Upon finding one, we realized we hadn't even been there yet, meaning a free elytra to display later. Then, we really got to work, just slowly chomping away at the structure of the city so we can rebuild it in our dimension. With that done, we got to work on the island, the last one of the video, and the one to send us off. Once the structure was laid out, the city was built up from there. I didn't want it to be too tall, so I only made it two stories instead of three. We still want to be able to admire it from down below. The idea of the build is the same as Minecraft, but I did make small improvements that I think just add a bit of spice to the structure. And by adding in these final bits of glass, this place is complete. Over the last 100 days, we have been successful in thriving on this island and creating my favorite world yet. And if you'd like to play on this world yourself, be sure to check it out on my Patreon and get it there. But as day 100 rolls around, we decided to go on a world tour, remembering all that we had done. The mining island, the first nether island, what I have dubbed the chore island, our dragon egg statue, of course the annoying sheep we barely even ate, 
the Bastion that looks better than the real thing, Chloe's favorite, the fishing island built just for her, and of course the final piece of the puzzle, the End City Island. All of this includes our journey on this lonely island, the one we began on and were able to call our home by the end of it. If you enjoyed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to reach 400,000 by the end of the year, and seeing you join me on this adventure would mean the world. Like the video and tell me what your favorite part was in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.